and I'm Kat. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing the mid-year freakout tag. So first we're going to talk about my mid-year reading stats, like how many books I've read, how many pages I've read, the genres I've been reading, stuff like that. And then we'll get more into the tag questions, talk about the best book I've read, the worst book I read, and so on. So first for my stats, so far I have read 82 books and about 25,400 pages. My average rating so far is a 3.3, which feels low. I'm not sure what it was last year. I didn't do a mid-year freakout tag last year to compare, but I feel like I haven't had the best reading year so far. Not a lot of terrible books, but just a lot of middle of the road books that I don't feel super excited about. So far I have only reread one book and I have acquired 17 books, whether that be buying them myself or getting them as gifts. Here is how each month has been breaking down so far. And this spread looks pretty normal for me. I feel like I always start off the year super strong, super excited about reading, super excited to start filling out my spreadsheet. Um, and then I kind of taper off, not much. It's only about three to five books. Um, but taper off throughout the rest of the year to more of my normal reading volume, which is about like 12 to 15 books a month. And the pages I've read each month obviously just kind of mirrors that data as well. Here's a breakdown of my star rating so far. It's pretty evenly split down the middle. Like that actually looks perfect. If I counted it up, it might be just an even split down the middle between what I consider to be not great ratings and pretty good ratings. I'm hoping we can bump up those five stars in the second half of the year. And then here is my genre breakdown so far, um, which again looks pretty normal for me. I would say my top three genres throughout the past few years have been horror, thriller, and romance with just a few other little random sprinklings in there. I think those are all the stats I'm going to go over for right now. I kind of like to save them all up till the end of the year um, to share with you because I track a lot of shit and I think it's fun to share all at once. So let's just get into the tag questions now. Now this tag always starts off with a bang. The first question is the best book you've read so far this year. Now I don't have one answer for you. I guess I should based on the bracket I've been doing on Instagram. I made this template um, and I have been filling it out each month. So by the end of the year, it will help me pick my number one book of the year. And even though at this point there is a winner, I guess, for the first half of the year, um, I still go back and forth between specifically two books <laughs> that are my best book of the year. So I'm just gonna talk about a few that I have really loved so far. So first, I guess I'll start with the book that is winning on my bracket and that is Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. This book absolutely wrecked me. Um, it is a historical fiction. We are following a girl named Betty throughout her life, her and her family. After I finished this, I cried for like the last 50 pages and then I continued crying for like three to four hours on and off after I finished this book. It just, it got me. And a book that can make me cry, a book that can just pull that sort of emotion out of me is usually going to be a winner for me. Um, so the other book that I have been going back and forth between whether Betty or this book is my number one of the year is A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers. Both of these books I read fairly early in the year. I think I read them in January and February and to this day in July like six to seven months later I still think about them. And the reason I've been going back and forth on which one is my absolute favorite of the year is just because like depending on the day, depending on the week, if you ask me it just depends what book is on my mind that day. Sometimes it's Betty, sometimes it's this one. So this is a... I don't really know what genre I would describe this as. I guess just kind of like general fiction. Um, when I pitch it, I guess it kind of sounds like a horror or a thriller, but to me, it doesn't have like spooky, creepy vibes. But we're following a woman named Dorothy who works as a food critic and she starts to kill and eat men. This book was just so interestingly written. Um, it's not one I recommend super liberally because I can understand why people wouldn't like it but something about it just really, really worked for me. Next is Saving Noah by Lucinda Berry. In this, we are following a woman whose son has come to her. He's like 15, 16, I believe, um, and tells her that he has been assaulting young girls on the swim team that he coaches. Along with loving books that make me cry, I love a book that makes me think. I love a book that shows me a different side to a situation, a side of a situation that is pretty uncomfortable. This mother loves her son and sympathizes with her son and, though he committed these horrible crimes, she still loves him and wants to care for him and wants the best for him and doesn't really understand why society doesn't see him the way she does. This is another one I know is not going to be for everyone because there are parts in the story where 
the author does kind of make you sympathize for a pedophile. Um, which isn't a great feeling, but is an interesting one. And the last book I'm going to talk about is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. If an Emily Henry book does not show up on my favorites list of the year, she simply hasn't written one. I think out of the three adult romances that Emily Henry has written, this has been the least well received. At least that's my perception just from seeing reviews and stuff. But this is, I think, at this point in time, my second favorite. I just love her writing. I love her characters. She just makes them seem so human and she gives them real realistic flaws and the trials and tribulations they face as individuals, but also as a couple also seem very realistic to me. She writes banter incredibly and this kind of has like a little bit of a Gilmore Girls vibe, which is one of my favorite shows. Now this question isn't actually on the mid-year freak out tag, but I feel like if you're gonna ask me about my best book, I wanna talk about my worst book also. So I'm gonna talk about some of my worst books of the year so far. The first book, the one that is winning or I guess losing on my bracket, cause I'm also doing one to help me decide my worst book of the year um, is Bright Side by Kim Holden. I vlogged while reading this, so I will link that if you want to go watch my live thoughts. I have never hated a character more. I hate this book so much. I hated the writing so much. I hated the characters so much. I hated the story so much. I literally can't think of one thing I enjoyed about this book. The next two books were written by the same author, so I will just kind of talk about them in tandem and they'll also kind of come up at a question later on. That is The Reunion and The Arrangement by Kirsten Modlin. I somehow read three books from this author, even though after reading the first one, I was like, this woman is not for me. Um, but I just wanted to try her out again. I wanted to read her most popular one, which I think is The Arrangement, it's the one I've heard the most about. And then I ended up reading another one for a readathon that I was doing. But I've just found exactly that. She is not for me. I don't enjoy her writing style, her plot twists, her characters. And I'll be honest, I don't really understand the hype around her books. So the next question is the best sequel you've read so far this year. This is always a hard question for me because I very rarely read series. But I actually do kind of have an answer for this. And that is What If You and Me by Ronnie Lauren. This is a second book in a series, but I have not read the first one. It's a romance series that just follows the same group of characters. It doesn't really have a linear storyline that you have to follow exactly. Um, so I just ended up picking this up on a whim one day and absolutely loved it. And now I definitely do want to read the first one. But I really like this because this is a romance that just has a bit more meat to it and a bit more depth to it. I like a fun rom-com every once in a while, but sometimes I like things to be a bit more emotional. This touches on things like anxiety, PTSD, abusive relationships. The male main character has also lost his leg due to his job. Um, so there is some disability rep, but along with that, there's a really sweet romance. There's some nice, light, funny moments, and I just really, really liked it. So the next question is a new release that you haven't read yet, but want to. So I'm just gonna go through my Goodreads real quick while I do this, because there are quite a few that I wanna mention. Um, the first being a Jawbone by Monica Ojeda. This seems really weird, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Next is The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I have not picked this up yet. His last book left me feeling a bit disappointed, so I didn't want to buy it right away. Um, so I'm just kind of waiting for it to become available at the library. Sometime in Summer by Katrina Leno. I cannot wait to read all of her books have worked so well for me. Notes on an Execution I've heard so many good things about and I'm actually planning to read it this month. And let's do one more. Oh, So Happy For You by Celia Lasky. I'm really excited about. I actually just recently added this to my TBR. I hadn't heard about it at all until I saw Gabby from Gabby Reads read it in a recent video and she was raving about it and it sounded like something that is just so up my alley. I think I'm really gonna enjoy it. So now I'm really excited for it. Next is my most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Again, I can't just name one. Um, one is Daphne by Josh Mallerman. I just feel like I'm really gonna like this. I'm really excited to read it. Just like Home by Sarah Gailey. Also, I loved their last book so much and I've heard really good things about this one so far. The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I'm excited to check out another thriller from her. I'm hoping a cult thriller will finally work out for me. Mary by Nat Cassidy I'm excited for. We're planning on reading that for Staff Strange, which is the book club I help co-host. And this just seems like it's gonna be a little weird, but really good. Um, it Looks Like Us by Allison Ames sounds really good. And All the Blood We Share by Camilla Bruce. I read a book from her last year, I think, and really, really enjoyed it. And this is kind of a similar premise. So next is my biggest disappointment. So I have two authors to talk about, not specific books. Um, the first being Jennifer Hillier. I've heard so many good things about her over the years, so many people raving about her. 
and I did an author taste test where I read four books from her and I think the highest rating I gave out was a 2.5. I really, really disliked all of them and I dislike all of them for pretty much all of the same reasons. So I don't think it's just like a specific trope or storyline that didn't work for me. I think it's just the author in general. Next is an author that I have already talked about and that is Kirsten Modlin. Um, I read three books from her this year and again disliked all of them for pretty much the same reasons. So just decided that this author is not for me. Both of these authors are not for me. I was really looking forward to reading from both of them because so many people rave about them. So I was a, I was a little disappointed to find out I couldn't also write about them. Next is my biggest surprise. So this is hard because I do usually go into books expecting that I'll like them. Um, so I'm not often surprised by books, but I think for this one, I'm gonna go with Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. This is, like I mentioned, a historical fiction and it is pretty long. Um, two things that I usually don't like. I have liked historical fiction when it's kind of like a subgenre, like it's a horror novel that just happens to be taking place like 50 years ago or a thriller that's taking place 50 years ago. I don't think I've ever read or really wanted to read a just general historical fiction. So while I was interested in this, it was on my TBR for a reason, I read it for a reason, I was not expecting to love it as much as I did. Next is my favorite new author, which was kind of hard to answer because I tend to bop around a lot. I don't read a lot from the same author unless I've already established a love for them, I guess. But I tend to read from authors that I've never read from before. And even if I loved the one book that I read from them, I don't think I would consider them a favorite author after just reading one book from them. But I will say I have further established some favorite authors, confirmed that they are favorite authors, um, one of them being Ashley Herring Blake. I believe before this year I read three or four of her books and loved them all. And this year so far I have read two new books from her and loved them as well. We'll continue to read from her always. Next is Emily Henry. Read this for the first time, loved it so much. Reread People on Vacation loved it just as much as the first time and would die for this woman. <laughs> and the last author I would consider on her way to becoming a favorite and that is Lucinda Berry. I read three books from her this year. Two of them were five stars I really really loved. I already talked about Saving Noah. I also read The Perfect Child which I really enjoyed but I read a third book from her of which I can't remember the name so I'll put it up here um, and really didn't like this and the other books that she has out at this time don't interest me as much. And I think she just published a new book last month that didn't really interest me. I think I like her more psychological, like general fiction stuff, more of what I would consider Saving Noah and The Perfect Child rather than her more typical thrillers. So I will continue to like keep my eye on her and see what she's coming out with. I think I did add her next release to my TBR. Um, so I will continue to read from her. I just don't know for sure if she's a favorite author, a new favorite author. I feel like I have to read a handful of books from an author to consider them as such. The next two questions were kind of difficult for me and that is your newest fictional crush and your newest favorite character. And this was hard because I don't really consider myself like a character driven reader. I think I'm more there for the plot. So a lot of times after I read a book, I kind of forget about the characters and I just remember like what happened in the book and how I felt about what happened. But I do still have a few answers. Unfortunately, they are the same books that I've already talked so much about. This always ends up happening. I just go on and on about the same like four or five books. So newest fictional crush, book lovers, Charlie is so sexy. I don't know what exactly it is, but something about this man is so hot to me. The chemistry I felt with him was off the charts. And as for newest favorite character, again in here, Nora, I loved so much. I know she was a reason a lot of people didn't like this book. They found her really unlikable which was kind of hurtful to me because I related to her a lot so I really liked her. Also in A Certain Hunger, Dorothy Daniels is one of the most interesting fascinating characters I've ever read about. She just has such an interesting voice, a voice that will stick with you. And last, Betty. I loved Betty so much in here. I cared about Betty so much but her father was the standout character for me. He was just such an incredible father, such an incredible husband. I just, I loved him so much. I loved his wisdom so much and I still think about him. I'm just gonna keep holding this up because it's also the answer to the next question, a book that made you cry. I already told you about how this made me sob, how much this made me sob. I've never fucking looked uglier. Like, you know when you cry just so hard and your face is swollen and your eyes are red and you're just like a snotty blubbering mess? 
this book did that for me. For a book that made me happy. I don't read a lot of books that are meant to make you happy. I guess I have been reading quite a bit of romance lately, um, which is the intention of that genre, I would say. But mostly I just read like dark, weird shit. <laughs> but a book that has made me happy so far this year is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. As I mentioned, this was a reread and I loved it just as much as I did the first time. I ended up listening to the audiobook this time. And usually with audiobooks, I feel like a bit disconnected from the story. I'm just not as immersed in it. I don't think I've ever cried while listening to an audiobook and I don't think I've ever really laughed out loud except when I've read this. Me and Emily Henry just have very similar senses of humor and it's very much displayed in here between Poppy and Alex and it just made me happy to read. I love this so much. So next is the most beautiful book you've bought this year. So I have two books. They're not the most like stereotypical beautiful aesthetic covers but I love them so much. The first is You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca. I always love Eric LaRocca's covers. They're just weird and dark and interesting and cool. Then I have My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I love this cover so much. It's one of my favorite covers of all time. I just love the 80s vibe, the like vintage VHS vibes, the stickers. It's just one of my favorites. So the last question, I'll be honest, I don't really understand. <laughs> um, it is, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And I just feel like we've already answered this. I guess I talked about the releases that I'm most looking forward to, which are not necessarily the books that I need to read, but those are the books I feel I need to read because I'm most looking forward to them. I don't know, but I'll talk more about books I'm excited about. I think I did already mention Mary by Nat Cassidy, but I'm very excited for this. I've had this pre-ordered, and like I mentioned, we are planning to read it for Sacks of Strange, so I guess I will be reading it. I do need to read it for the book club. Next is Quarry Girls by Jess Laurie, which I am looking forward to, but I'm a little bit nervous about. I have read three books from this author so far. The first one I read like changed my life. It was one of my favorite books of last year, and I loved it so much. So then I wanted to go into her backlist and read some more of her books. And the other two books I read from her really did not work for me. Um, I loved Bloodline so much though that I will continue to read everything she writes. But just based on the last two books I read from her, I'm not sure how this one is gonna go. The Family Game is also a thriller that I'm looking forward to and I do have an arc of it. So I guess I do need to read that before the end of the year. Um, and last, The Pain Eater is another one I'm really looking forward to. This is a horror novella. And again, I have an arc of it, although I think at this point it's already been published. Um, but I do, I do need to read it so I can review it. And I'm just really excited for this one. So those are all the stats and questions we're going to go over today. I would love to hear some of your answers to these questions. If you've read anything I read, how you felt about it, like is my best book your worst book? Is my worst book your best book? Let me know. Also let me know how your reading year is going so far. I would love to hear. As I said, mine is meh, comme si, comme ça. Um, so I hope it improves in the second half of the year. I hope I just read some really incredible books that I'm just so excited about. I just can't shut up about them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!